Hi friends, it's Marie at Living Felt and in today's tutorial we are going to be wet felting scarves. I love this project so much because they are great gifts for yourselves and great gifts for friends and family. You can make scarves in the colors of your choice. You can make them long or short and today's tutorial is really all about wet felting a long scarf in a small space. So whether you decide to wet felt a long scarf or a table runner or even shorten the length compared to what we've made, we're going to show you techniques that will allow you to make a long scarf even if your space restrictions are small such as working on a kitchen countertop or island or even just a short table. We'll show you how to wet felt your scarf using pre-felts. We'll also look at working with our sari silks and sari yarns and also some of our art yarns. We'll use just a little bit of merino top and some luster fibers to give it some sheen and help anchor everything down. But this is a very beginner friendly project and we're going to show you how you can make your very own wet felt scarf in no time at all. Before we jump into the supplies and start on your scarf, let's look at a few of the samples I made before beginning my own scarf with this project. First, we have a patchwork, which is a result of cutting up multiple units of our sari silk. We sell sari silk in packs called sari parties, and this is an example of using our PFL prefelt with the sari silk. Uh, cut into patches and I did not use any additional merino top or silk fibers. I only used the pre-felt as the base and wet felted the sari silks right on top. So if you like this patchwork look, then you might uh, endeavor to make your own sample of this size, make sure all of your fabrics work well and will adhere well. And if you're having any trouble spots, then you might add some merino top on top. With this piece I will tell you that there were some edges that looked like they weren't going to stick but for the sake of the sample I decided not to add any additional fibers and just kept rolling and everything is held down really well. If you have any trouble spots you can just add some stitching and you can even add some uh, like basting stitches during the wet felting process and take them out later once it's all felted. So this is an example of the patchwork of silk fabrics on top of our PFL pre-felt. In the next sample, I used one long piece of sari silk fabric. So this would be an example if you had one of our sari soirees, which is a really long cut, or if you just want to test out a single fabric that you have, then this would be the method. The thing to notice when making samples is what was your starting width and what was your starting length and what does the texture feel like when you're finished. You want to know what to expect when you make a very long scarf so you know how long your materials need to be in the set out. That includes like your bubble wrap and your plastic, which we'll look at in a moment, but also your pre-felt. You also want to notice the hand Hand of your samples, how do they feel? So is it too stiff or is it under felted? Because you want it to last a long time, but you also want it to feel really good for the person who's wearing it. This last piece is an example of the scarf that we are going to make together. This I used our PFM pre-felt, which is the same as I used in our last sample. I also used our sari silk ribbons and ran them the entire length of the sample, plus I let them stick off the end as a fringe, which I think is just really fun and playful. I also used our mohair yarns, the brushed mohair yarns and the uh, big loop uh, mohair yarns, and I used a little bit of merino top and um, some luster fibers like viscose within the body to see how I liked it. What I noticed once I made the sample was I did get the shrinkage I was wanting, but the scarf overall felt a little stiff and the yarns were a little hairy. So I decided to use them only on lengths that would hang down on the body of the wearer and not be around the neck or face. And um, 
I also decided to use a few less yarns so that the scarf would feel just a little more soft and have a little more wool in between. So I really encourage you to begin this project by making a small sample that you can turn into, uh, you know, a little placemat somewhere, hang it as wall art, or just hang on to it so you know how your materials worked together and you can make your tweaks and changes before starting on a great big long scarf. I love wet felting with the sari silks and the sari ribbon yarns because I love all of the texture and the ruching that they give. If you're wanting a really clean edge on your scarf, you'll love working with the pre-felts. But if you want clean edges on all ends, then you just don't have to trail over the fibers like I did. And instead of using the yarns, you can work with the sari silks or you might just stop your yarns before you get to the end of the scarf. So we really do encourage you to make a few samples, see what you like and what you don't like, or for whomever you're making the scarf for, so that you have a really great model to work from. For the materials for this project, there really are no rules, but to make it simple and really good for beginners or even your first long scarf in a small space, we've chosen to use our pre-felt and I'll be working with our PFM pre-felt. But as I mentioned earlier, both the PFM and the PFL will work, but you could also choose to use this with our cobweb scarf type layout or just shingling merino top as you normally would. For all measurements and dimensions that I used, please reference the supplies page. Just follow the link down below. We'll also be using Merino Top 19.5 Micron. You'll only need a little. I'll be using two colors, but you'll use less than an ounce. And I'll also be adding viscose. The main design comes from our Sari Ball Art Yarns. I love these balls of yarn. They're really upcycled saris and these have all been custom made for us to include lots of delicious patterns and beautiful colors. There's such variegation throughout each ball and I'll be mixing colors from both our bluish purple and our green balls. In addition, we're going to be using our art yarns. These are such fun collections of a variety of artsy wool and mohair yarns. Some are big loops, some are brushed, some are just looped uh, like a boucle and you can mix and match. So check those out. We'll be using them on the body of our scarf, but nowhere around the neck or face because they can be a little bit hairy. If you want to change up supplies or do something different, I might also suggest our Sari Parties. These are collections of 10 coordinated silk fabrics that are upcycled from vintage saris. They're absolutely beautiful and you're going to get these wonderful small cuts uh, that you can cut even smaller or patchwork together just like that. We also have some Sari Soirees. Maybe you've already purchased one. The Sari Soirees are longer lengths of individual soirees. And of course, you can also do this project with other silk fabrics, other fabrics you've already tested, or just fibers such as mohair and luster fibers. Let's look at the tools you need. The tools for this wet felting project are really straightforward. Of course, you're gonna want room temperature water because we wanna keep the felting process slow because we wanna give the fibers time to migrate through whatever fabrics you're using. Of course, we'll be working with our olive oil soap. A wetting device such as a sponge and or a ball brass is very helpful. And you're going to want extra towels because this is such a big project, you can expect more water to squish out as we roll it. For pool noodles, you need two short ones. They don't need to be long, they're gonna get in your way. So spend the dollar or two dollars on your pool needle and go ahead and cut them into short lengths. They should be wider than your bubble wrap, at least that's ideal, that's really helpful. And you might also want a dowel for the final felting stage. Um, mine is about two feet long. For your bubble wrap, it should be at least six inches longer than your layout will be. Cut it narrow so that you don't have too much to deal with and then just tape it together in the middle so that you get the length you want. I just use masking tape on mine. I'm using one sheet of plastic for my layout. Again, it should be about the length of the bubble wrap and the same width as the bubble wrap. You can use two if you're going to decorate both sides of your scarf, but we're only decorating one on ours. For the mesh, work with whatever size you have. This is my single station layout. We're just going to use it for the wedding 
initial pressing and then pick it up and move it on, replace it with our plastic. In this tutorial, we are assuming that you do know how to wet felt. If this is your first wet felting project, by all means, watch it. Go back, check out some of our very beginner wet felting videos and make sure whether you're experienced or a beginner to make your samples first. Let's dive into this project. To prepare your materials, pre-cut your pre-felts to the desired size. I cut mine to about nine inches by 35 inches and used one yard. Had I made mine a little bit shorter, then I could have made two complete scarves with one yard. So make your samples and check out your measurements before you um, decide how much you need to make one or however many scarves you're going to make. It can be helpful to prepare your sari silk ribbon yarns into the lengths you'll use. We shared my measurements on the PDF. I like to wrap the sari ribbon yarns around these fat popsicle sticks. That will help me control them as we lay out in segments. And then for the art yarns, I take the full five lengths of all the yarns. I cut it in half and then half again and make two separate piles, one for each end of the scarf. Start by laying out one base towel at least and one cross towel. Roll up your bubble wrap and stretch it out to the length of your base towel and then lay your first piece of pre-felt down leaving at least a hand width or more from the edge of the bubble. I start by laying out the sari ribbon yarns. I keep the sari ribbon yarns off the very end of the pre-felt so they don't migrate and squish off all the way. So alternate them. I chose five and the handy um, popsicle sticks help me corral them at the other end of the scarf as we reel them out across the length. Once the sari ribbons are in place, then I go back in with the mohair and wool yarns and just fill them in. The brushed yarns do very well along the very edge. You can also use the loopy yarns there. And yours don't have to be as straight as mine, so play with whatever design you worked out on your sample. But for this one, I'm going for a very stripy art yarn scarf. So lay all those out the full length of the pre-felt that you have. And I do stop actually about a hand's length or a few inches from the edge where so I can join the next two pieces together when I get there. I leave about uh, five or six inches sticking off the end of the pre-felt and I do like to reel on to the popsicle stick more yarn than I'll need so that when I get to the other end of the scarf I can decide what I want to be the last thing I see. It just gives you a little more options if you have a, a length that you can control. So give yourself a little bit extra and have fun laying out your yarns. Once our yarns are in place, if you're making a similar scarf to myself, then I like to top them with our merino tops and in this case I used viscose as a luster fiber. You can use any fibers you like. The merino top is fluffed out into thin little clouds, little webs, little cobwebs, and I use it um, one to break up the strong lines of the ribbons, two, to help staple down any tricksy part of the ribbons, and um, three, just to add interest to the design. The viscose is just gonna add a bit of sheen and a bit of texture. We already have a lot of texture going on, so use your own discretion. And again, it's really just to add a little bit of interest and depth, but it does also help act as a staple since the fabrics don't actually felt. The wool fibers will connect with the pre-felt down below and with the fuzzy mohair yarns to give us a nice felt. You can keep it thin and you can cover some areas more thickly if you like. You can go in between the ribbons, but definitely go across the ribbons with your fibers so that they help connect everything in that normal crisscross fashion. If any of your yarns come apart, they are sewn together, at least the ones you get from us. If they come apart, just tie them in a knot and cut off the excess. You can always bury any part of a yarn that you don't like or a join or a knot with merino top. 
So complete until you get almost to the end of this section to where you have your yarns all wrapped around their little dowels. Wet that section through your mesh, adding soap and water at the same time, pressing air out and water and soap in. And then gently peel back your mesh and replace it with your plastic. Once you have that section covered with the fibers of your choice, it's time to join your pre-felt cuts. If you're using the PFM, you'll find that the edges separate very easily. So take advantage of that if you're using it and fluff out the edges so that they're going to taper and lay together very nicely. Lay the two edges together, press it nice and flat, and then continue with your design. Everything from here forward is just a repeat. Lay out your yarns, let them twist or make sure they're straight. If you wanna make sure they're straight, then reel them onto your dowels really straight in the first place. But if you don't mind the twists and turns, then uh, let those do what they do. and fill in with the other fibers. Again, wet that section through your mesh, adding soap and water at the same time, pressing air out and water and soap in and then gently peel back your mesh and replace it with your plastic. You're gonna continue this process for the entire length of your piece, whether you're making a scarf or a table runner or a wall hanging or whatever, until you get to the other end and then just let the yarns trail off the end just as you did with the beginning. When you get to the opposite end, remember to add back in the same types of yarns that you did on the other end. If you followed us, we used our mohair, uh, boucle, and brush yarns. And then when you get to the very end, you can decide whether you like what's trailing off the end of the scarf. And if you don't like it, just cut it and piece it. You can bury any piecing underneath your wool and you can cut off any extras bury any knots underneath fiber in your layout. So finish with the second side of your scarf, cut all your yarns to the desired length, wet and roll it all up. Once your product is all laid out and wet out, then we're going to roll it up. Use your extra towels to kind of contain the package because if you put a lot of water, it's all gonna come out when you start to roll and better catch it than let it get up on the floor. That's one of the reasons I like to wet out with the sponge is it really controls the amount of water you apply. But if you're accustomed to using another watering device or like the ball bras, just expect a lot of water to come out of the project when you start to roll. We are going to roll this project at least 100 times from each end. I would rather you roll 100 times in our full rock and roll fashion and then pause and make sure that your package is not sliding or slipping. You want it to be completely round. If it's completely round or you unroll it and re-roll it, then can keep rolling from that side for another count of 100. Then we're gonna roll from the opposite direction and this is where the second pull noodle really comes in handy. We use our second pull noodle to roll from the other end. You can see that my demonstration scarf is shorter than my original scarf. My original scarf, I used one more length of the pre-felt, so choose your own length. But unroll your package and then immediately employ the second pull noodle to start rolling from the other end. 
we'll use the pool noodle in the same way to roll from the opposite side. So continue to roll from end to end on the one side 400 times. You can do it in sets of 100 from each end or 200 from each end, however you feel most comfortable. Just make sure that your package stays nice and round and that it's not shifting. When you unroll it, make sure to take a moment to straighten it and don't let it buckle up on itself and get crinkled. Making a large project like this is not more difficult, it just takes more time. So dig into your patience and if you need to allow extra time for the felting, do. If you can't finish it all in one day, that's totally fine. I would leave it rolled up in its roll so it stays all nice and moist for at least a day, I mean a day if you need to, two days max so it doesn't get musty but you can come back to it if you need to. The most important thing is to spend the time it takes to actually felt the project, so just keep on rolling. After you've done 400 from the top, then flip it over and go from the back. If you want to flip your scarf over and have the bubbles on now touching the top side of the scarf, this is how you do it. After rolling about 400 times from each edge on the top and the bottom, or the two short ends, top and the bottom lengthwise, then I like to remove my plastic if it feels like things are getting dense and actually felt with my dowel. I've been doing that for a little while, so you felt however you like to felt. You might be using a palm washboard or some other tool, but I encourage you not to use those too early on because the pre-felt will want to felt to the wool and we want to it want to felt rather quickly and we want to slow things down and have them migrate through this art yarn let's unroll our package i want to show you how you can roll from side to side and i think our piece is about ready for some fulling i am working now on our long scarf so you're going to get to see the full uh length of making the long full scarf Once your piece is really starting to hold together, you can fold it over on itself and roll it up. You can do this so that you shorten the width of the scarf, um, and you're probably gonna be surprised, but a lot of it's already shrunk in the width anyway because the fibers are all going towards the other fibers. You can roll it up in your plastic to do this. You can roll it up in the fullness of your bubble to do this, or you can just roll it on top of your bubble. Whatever it is, just keep rolling it until you're pretty happy that you have a really nice felt. It's holding together, the fabrics are laying down what like you want them and all the fibers are staying in place. You're gonna wanna go around the length of the scarf and just check the doneness. You'll probably also see on the back side some of the mohair starting to come through and that migration is a really good sign that things are coming together. Make sure you do your pinch test and the slide test with your hands so that things feel like one solid piece of fabric and not individual layers that are still shifting on each other. If it feels like that, make sure it's wet all the way through and continue your agitation with rolling, rubbing, palming, whatever you like. My project is really holding together. As I mentioned, this is the long scarf that I'm working on and I'm very happy with how it looks. I'm ready for it and feels, so it feels like a good felt. I'm ready for the fulling and for this particular scarf, I want some texture. Sometimes I tell you, if you don't want texture, then don't do this part. We're gonna do a little bit of wadding and throwing and that's gonna help everything just scrunch up super well. So your project should be um, nice and wet. Um, it doesn't have to be dripping. It should just still be um, plenty moist. And we're just gonna drop it. Drop it onto the table and then kind of wad it up in our hands and you can do the same rolling on your tabletop. 
uh, or right onto your bubble. I think the bubble makes a great work surface. So I just like how this process causes everything to kind of scrooge up. So if you want your project to stay very flat and uniform, then roll only, rinse, uh, do your vinegar soak and steam press. But if you want a bit of wiggledyness, then you can do the dropping. You don't even have to be very aggressive. But do um, take note and don't do this too early. If you do it too early before your project is fully felted, then it's gonna look pretty rough and hairy on the surface. So make sure you have a good felt first. If you're not sure, let it sit overnight and dry out. So rinse it out and dry it out and see how it feels. If it needs more felting, just re-wet it, re-soap it, and get back to it. If you think your scarf is finished, the next step is to rinse all of the soap out, make sure it's fully rinsed out, and then we're gonna do what's just called a vinegar rinse. Just fill a vessel with water, add a splash of vinegar, and we're gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes. I like to do this while I clean up. The vinegar helps the wool reach its normal pH, which will bring back its normal sheen and its normal hand. It also helps break down any residual soaps left in your project. So let it chill and make this a regular part of your felting. Roll your scarf in a towel, uh, spin it out in the spin dryer or spin it out in the washing machine if you have one where it doesn't always apply water and just hang it to dry overnight or lay it flat if you prefer. You'll see the lovely sheen of any luster fibers that you put on and even the silk ribbons when it's all dry. So we'll check back on it when everything is dry and ready to wear. That's it for this time, guys. I hope you've had fun. Hey, let us know your favorite takeaway or what color combinations you would use in the comments down below. And please, if you felt your own scarf, please share them in our Facebook group, Living Felt Friends. For more wet felting videos, check out our playlist or this next video right here.